This is Math 142, section 13.2. We're going to find some limits, but we're going to find them algebraically. So in the last chapter, we were doing them numerically and we were doing them uh, graphically. So what we can do is we can take advantage of some of the algebra skills that we have to evaluate these limits. So let's take this first one. The limit is x approaches 7 of x plus 9 over x minus 6. Now, I know that if I graph this, it's going to have an asymptote at 6 at positive 6, like, you know, um, and it will go probably something like this. So out here at x equals 7, there should be a point. So what I'm going to try to do is just plug it in and see what happens. I'm going to try to just evaluate it. So if I just plug it in, 7 plus 9 over 7 minus 6, uh, 7 plus 9 is 16 over 1, that's 16. So unless it's a piecewise function, which none of these will be, if I can evaluate it, the limit is the same as the um, the evaluate where you can evaluate it because like I like I said before the graph of this is going to look something like this it doesn't have a hole there all right let's let's try this let's try this next one so first thing I'm going to do is just try to evaluate it just plug it in and see what happens so five minus five over twenty five minus five you know we did this one in the last lecture zero over zero. I'm not going to be able to just evaluate it. But what I can do is a little bit of manipulation here. So I'm still finding the limit as x approaches 5. I have this x minus 5. But let me factor this, x squared minus 25. This is x plus 5 times x minus 5. And notice that x minus 5 divides out, which is great because that's the thing that was giving me a 0 in the denominator. So let me try it now. That'd be one over x plus five, and I could just try to just try to evaluate that. So let me just plug it in. One over five plus five is one tenth, or point one. So when I go to do this algebraically, what I can do is if I end up dividing by zero, I'm going to try and factor these pieces, or maybe do some arithmetic and see if something will cancel out. And if it does, I might be able I might be able to get away with just evaluating what's left. Great. So let me try this next one. Uh, the limit as x approaches negative 3 of this. Notice if I just plug in negative 3, I'm dividing by 0. So that's not going to help me. So let me factor what I've got. Uh, things that multiply to 12 add to 7, 4, and 3. Which makes sense to me that that should happen if I'm going to evaluate this, because I'm going to want to be able to eliminate that x minus 3, because that makes me divide by 0. So that divided by that is 1. So now what I have is the limit as x approaches negative 3 of just x plus 4. And now I can just plug that in. Plug it in, negative 3. It's 1. All right, I have a few more examples for you. So this very first one, the, the limit as x approaches 5 of this thing over x minus 5. So I notice if I just try and plug it in, plug in 5, I'm going to be dividing by 0. So let me see if I can do anything with it. Limit as x approaches 5, x minus 5. Uh, this factors into a 4 and a 2. So x squared plus, uh, sorry, x plus 4 times x plus 2. All right, notice nothing divides out here for me. So even if I try to plug that 5 in, I'm still dividing by 0. If nothing cancels out and I'm dividing by zero, that limit does not exist. Or if nothing cancels out that I can use, right? Even if I do my reducing, if I end up with still dividing by zero, my limit's not going to exist. This next one, if I try to plug in zero for h, I'm going to be dividing by zero. And it actually end up with zero over zero. Nine minus nine is nine. So there's nothing I can factor yet here, but let me deal with this a little bit. How about I multiply this out? 3 plus h squared. And remember, when you're squaring something, it means times itself. So we have a 9. Uh, we have an h squared, but we also have a, there's my h squared, a 3h and another 3h. So it's plus 6h. So this, this squared is that minus 9 over h. We're still taking the limit. And 9 minus 9 is 0. 
And now let me see what I can do. Oh yeah, I can factor an H out of here. The limit is H approaches zero of H times six plus H over H. That H divides out. So I'm really finding the limit as H approaches zero of six plus H. I can plug it right in. Six plus zero is six. Cool. All right, next one. If I were to plug in a four, I'd be dividing by zero. So I'm gonna have to deal with this a little bit. Uh, limit as x approaches four. If I factor this, this factors to a negative four and a two. So x minus four, x plus two over negative x plus four. Now looking at this, it doesn't look uh, at first glance like anything cancels out. But I do notice this is an x minus four and this is a negative x plus four. So one thing I could do in the denominator here is actually factor out a negative one. So down here, if I think of this as a, if I take out a negative one, these signs will switch, right? Distribute that back into their negative x, positive four. So really that will divide out. This is a good trick to have in your, uh, in your arsenal. So I have x uh, plus two divided by negative one. So I can actually plug that in, plug in the four, uh, four plus two divided by negative one is negative six. All right, and the very last one, limit as x approaches one of x minus three. I'm just gonna plug it in. Let me just plug it in. So uh, one minus three is negative two. There it is. All right, so as you're doing these algebraically, try to plug it in first. If it, if you, it makes you divide by zero, try and um, try and do some work for it. You know, do some factoring or do some arithmetic and see what you can cancel out. Oftentimes you'll be able to cancel something out and you can get to the limit. But if, if the trouble spot doesn't cancel out, your limit does not exist. Post questions in the forum. Message me anything you have.